Hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Fuel for Success, episode number 149. I hope you're enjoying your Monday. We're going to do our very best to make it even better right here on Fuel for Success. Today is Monday. We love Mondays for a lot of reasons, not the least of which is today we're going to talk about health and weight loss. How's my friend Matt today? I missed you this weekend, friend. Missed you, man. It looks like you had a good weekend. Speaking of health, you uh, went and made a huge difference in some people's lives, a home missions church, so that was good to see. I was proud of you. Missed you as well. Good to be back on Fuel for Success. Can't believe this is episode 149 because no. 149 is right before the big one. Tell them a little bit about that, Mike. Well, tomorrow, of course, is episode number 150, which just blows me away because that's like, that means we've broadcast like 75 plus hours of content this year so far. And uh, so I'm excited about that, but I'm also excited about tomorrow. We're going to be unveiling something, uh, an interesting surprise that everybody will probably want to get in on. And um, I'm, uh, I'm hoping to... Uh, to wrap up all the details on that today, so that uh, so that we can we can hit it tomorrow. I mean, so 150 episodes. Hmm? Who would have ever thought, Mike? Who would have ever thought, man? I am so excited. And you know what I love? I appreciate all of our regular viewers that watch daily, and then of course those that watch later on the archives. We're very thankful for those that take time to watch Fuel for Success. I, I think we're right over a hundred thousand views right now in our 149 episodes, which is pleasing to us. I don't think we uh, thought that we would hit that many so soon, but hey, to one person that takes time out of their day to watch Fuel for Success, it's a blessing for us, man. We're, we're honored to be able to do this for you every single day. Uh, Mike and I both had uh, scheduling conflicts this morning. Usually we meet every, nine, every morning at 9 a.m. Today, we're bringing you health and weight loss at 11.30. So Mike, uh, this is our health and weight loss show. Uh, one of our favorite days because we get an opportunity to uh, impact people's health. Uh, people are losing weight as a result of our Monday show. People are now juicing as a result of this show. People are now eating healthier. And uh, that's, that's what our objective is with Mondays, is to uh, bring inspiration and bring conviction and bring encouragement, uh, bring, you know, nuggets, recipes, tips. So I want to just throw something out there real quick, Mike. Sure. Um, I was actually last week sitting down with somebody that's uh, in the process of losing, you know, he's, he's 300 pounds. And somebody had gotten him on the low-carb diet. Uh, and so we were just sitting there talking about this. Well, tell me all about your diet. And he said, well, it's the low carb diet, meaning that, you know, I eat a lot of high protein, a lot of meats, uh, hardly any breads or carbs. And, uh, you know, and, and, you know, obviously, Mike, when you cut out carbs, you're going to lose weight. Probably one of the number one causes of weight gain is carbs, the bad carbs, I should say. So in talking to him, listening to him, you know, he's now 40, he's 300 pounds, he's literally told me that he's been dieting since he was 12, 13 years old. And I said, well, let, let me do this. I said, you know, uh, the low carb diet is good, it's not that healthy, and I'm going to tell you why, um, but it is good for losing weight. But what I want to do is I want to change three things, just three things in your mind. Number one, I don't ever want you to use the word diet again, okay? The first three letters in diet are die. Usually people that diet die early because diets are unhealthy. Diets are bad for you. Again, if, if it doesn't become a lifestyle of health, this is why I tell every single client that I work with in my weight loss coaching. One of the first things I say is, look, our focus is not on weight loss, our, or excuse me, our focus is not on uh, just weight loss. Our focus is on health because I can help anybody lose weight. I mean, you can starve yourself and lose weight. There's all right. kinds of different people. People eat, lose weight by eating Subway every day. Literally, you know, you got Jared out there. And then there's apparently this guy that's lost over 100 pounds by eating McDonald's every day. So, uh, you know, 
the goal is not just weight loss, the goal is health. And I said, I want to get that in your mind. And the second thing I want to do is I want to completely uh, take away the, the terminology or the philosophy or the energy or the, the, the lifestyle of dieting. You're not on a low carb diet anymore. Now, I'm cool with low carbs as a lifestyle because I personally do that myself, even though in moderation, I appreciate and love a sub or a sandwich or whatever. But in moderation, I live pretty much a low carb lifestyle. But I said, the thing you want to be careful of uh, when you're doing the, the, the high protein is that an overconsumption of meat is cancer causing. And especially when you're eating meat that's uh, genetically modified or that is not organic meat, uh, you know, if you're eating a lot of pork, and it was, and a lot of red meat, uh, you're high risk of heart disease. Uh, and I said, so understand this, that what we want to do is we want to actually incorporate more exercise, more juicing, and uh, meal planning and healthy lifestyle. And if you're going to eat meat, let's scale it back. I mean, the guy was eating a lot of meat, and all I could see was heart attack in the future or possibly disease or cancer. It's a proven fact that people that eat a lot of meat. Now, I believe in eating meat. I eat a lot of salmon, uh, turkey, chicken. I'm cool with all that in moderation. I'm even more cool if you make the commitment to eat all organic when it comes to your meats because the amount of chemicals, the amount of, uh, you know, the fact that most of the, the meats that we're eating today out of supermarkets or grocery stores, uh, stores are literally have all these, uh, you know, I think the word is, I don't want to, I don't know if it's antibiotics, Mike might be, can help me here. Yeah, yeah antibiotics, all these chemicals and things like that. So just be careful. You, you that are out there that are trying to lose weight, you know, the, the traditional dieters are going to push you to low carb. I'm going to steer you away from the low carb diet. I'm going to steer you away from all diets. I am going to push you to juice. And that was the problem. He was doing all meats, no carbs, but almost no vegetables. And that becomes a problem when you don't put vegetables in your body, you're not going to be healthy. You might be skinny, but you're not going to be healthy. I know skinny people that are sick all the time. I know skinny people that don't feel good. I know skinny people that get diseases. That's because they're not putting proper uh, nutrients in their body that they would get from fruits and vegetables and the enzymes that they would get and these fruits and vegetables that literally fight off diseases. So there's your Monday nugget of the week for your health, my friends. That's good. And uh, I'm, I'm all about reducing carbs as well, but hey, don't replace them with meat. That's silly. Replace it with uh, fruits and vegetables. Uh, that's what you need more of in your life anyway. So, uh, and, and you're absolutely right about most of the meat that you buy today is like mass produced meat and uh, it it doesn't have the nutritional value that you're really looking for and the, plus there's a lot of negatives involved in that. Um, there should actually be very little red meat in your diet. It's also an inflammatory agent. So uh, adds inflammation to your, to your entire body which uh, reduces your overall health. So uh, and I agree with you. And, and and when you say diet, you know, what you're talking about is sort of the, the fad diets and the things that say, you know, do this and do that and eat this and don't eat that. And there's all kinds of different things out there. And, and each one of them, if you watch, they'll come and go. They'll come and go yeah, and, and it'll be here for a while and then it'll be gone. And it's like, you know, don't even fall for that because that isn't that isn't healthy. It's not healthy. And just 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 to be clear, you're not advocating eating McDonald's to lose weight, right? No, no, nor Subway, nor anything like that. I'm I mean, kidding. I know. Exactly. I'm glad you clarified because I did. There'd be people out there that might be like, hey, yeah, I get to eat McDonald's every day. I'm going to lose weight. You eat McDonald's every day. You're literally saying, God, I'm begging you to give me diseases. I want diseases. I want cancer. I want to be sick. That's what you're doing when you're eating McDonald's every day. You're literally I would inviting God to strike you with disease. I think if I ate McDonald's every day, personally, I would lose weight, but it would be a lot like me just uh, having a laxative diet. I would also lose weight then, but I wouldn't be very uh, healthy. Sorry, ah. that TMI. <laughs> no, you know me, I'm all about that talk. I, I'm, I'm personally comfortable <laughs> with the bowel movement conversation. 
It's a celebration in our home when, when we go, you know. It's something I believe in, my friend, and it's it's part of healthy living. And that's one of the things that if you're not doing that regularly, then you need to up your juicing and your fiber and take it serious and don't turn to laxatives. You know, you're again, I'm all about fixing the cause and not the effect. Medicine deals with the effects. I deal with the causes and, and Mike and I both in our teachings. And our seminars and our book writing, article writing, and our coaching, we go to the effect, we go to the causes. And let's talk about, you know, I don't want to just deal with the effects, you know, the symptoms. I want to know what's causing this and let's fix it. Because here's the bottom line. You ever heard of that book, Position Heal Thyself? I literally believe. Now, please, anything that Mike and I say on this show, first thing I want to say is we're not doctors. Second thing I want to say is always uh, research. Anything we say, we're given inspiration. We're not given medical advice at all. Uh, I'm not going to tell anybody to stop, stop taking medication or not to go see a doctor. We're going to give our views. Uh, we're going to give our philosophy, but it's only for motivation and inspiration and encouragement. Hey, test us. But I will say this real quick is that... I believe the body was designed by God to heal itself. The body is such, it's such a, it's such a divine miracle. If you don't believe in creation, study the body. The human body is miraculous. And I literally believe that proper rest, reducing stress, good physical exercise, consistent juicing and eating clean and living a, a pH lifestyle to where uh, your body is alkaline and you're not living a high acidic lifestyle and you're not filling your body with uh, sugar and white flour and processed foods. It, it just, you can't get sick. And it all comes back, Mike, everything, like you can study it. The people that are getting diabetes, the people that are having heart disease, the people that are getting cancers unnecessarily, all of it is traced back to our lifestyle. That's why we're not for... Uh, we're not for uh, diets because diets are temporary solutions. Lifestyle is what I tell my clients. Guess what? You're, you're juicing twice a day until you lose your 80 pounds, but you're juicing twice a day after you lose 80 pounds. You're juicing twice a day for the next 30 days, and guess what? Five years from now, you're juicing twice a day at least. It's your lifestyle. Like I so make it like a religion for my clients. Like It's mandatory to juice at least twice a day because you need to fill your body with those nutrients, enzymes, and all the benefits that come from the different types of fruits and that. Mike, I still don't relate with people that aren't juicing regularly yet. How could you, you're missing out and it's not that hard. You know, let's talk about hard for a minute, Mike. Mike, when somebody tells you it's just so hard for me to eat healthy, what's your response to that? Uh, well, you know, there, I, my response is, you know, I'm an engineer, so I always look for solutions. My response is like, okay, well, what can you do today? I mean, there's, there could, there's gotta be a number of steps that you can take. Make one step to start eating healthy. You know, I mean, let's first of all, start with water. How much water do you drink every day? Water's not expensive. It's not difficult. Start there. Then, then let's look at, you know, you just your overall diet. You're going to eat something. So even if you don't jump right in and start juicing right away, I would say what's what's hard about uh, when you sit down on Sunday night after church and you're going to order something, what's hard about ordering a salad instead of a cheeseburger? There's yes, the point. salad at Applebee's isn't the most healthy thing in the world, but it's oh, better than a bacon cheeseburger. You know what I'm saying? So um, so I say, you know, make the, the easy changes first. There's a lot of easy things that you can do that are going to start to build and, and add value to your life and, and add to your health. But really, the next thing I would say is, you know, how, how hard is it to grab a handful of spinach and some berries and throw it in a Nutribullet for 15 seconds and then drink it? You know, and then you yeah. rinse the Nutribullet and it's three minutes later, you're done. It's not hard. Yeah. I think, Mike, I sort of belong to the military because I'm kind of no, I'm no nonsense on these types of talks. I, I'm, yeah. I'm not the one to like be empathetic when I hear people say it's hard. I'm really not. 
I'm actually the, the opposite. I literally almost make people feel stupid that look at me and tell me it's hard because I don't want to hear that it's hard. You want to know what's hard? What's hard is your kid going to your funeral when he didn't have to go to your funeral. That's hard, my friend. You needing to eat healthier to make you feel right, that's not hard. You getting up and going and exercising for 30 minutes, that's not hard. You, like Mike said, making the choice to, to eat healthier, it's not hard. We're so weak mentally and we're so we're such excuse makers it's born out of laziness it's born out of it's it's born out of this this spoiled rotten culture that we live in that we don't we don't pay the price for anything we don't sacrifice we don't delay gratification we want everything now you know we, we just you know and it's that way when we were kids i mean you know most and it all started with our parents bribing us that if we good if we're good we'll get candy or if we're good we can have you know an extra Twinkie at night or whatever. Uh, I'm just of the opinion that forget hard, you know, forget that myth that, oh, this is going to be hard if I live a healthy life. You know what? 99.9% .9 of my clients tell me after I completely change their lifestyle of eating, most of them love it more. Literally, they don't miss the old garbage and the old junk because they get to eat it in moderation, but the key word is moderation. But I literally teach people, you become a health nut Monday through Friday. Because if you go to work Monday through Friday, the end result Friday is a paycheck. If you don't go to work Monday through Friday, the end result is no paycheck. So if you eat healthy and you exercise Monday through Friday, the end result is an overall vibrant, healthy lifestyle. So that's why I teach people get in the get in the rhythm of just being extreme about your health Monday through Friday, go moderation on Saturday and Sunday and make this your lifestyle. This is the simplest thing to me because, you know, people already get up when they don't want to get up in the morning to go to work. They go and work all day because they know that the end result is that they are going to get um uh, a, a paycheck. So let me say one more thing, Mike, a drill. I'm going to give you guys a little, uh, a little nugget here, uh, that I've done with clients that I've done coaching with. And that is, um, I tell clients to write down how they feel when they eat unhealthy, like, like really describe how you feel. And I tell them after they've eaten unhealthy, you know how it is when you go and you, you go out to eat and you order, uh, you know, maybe a, a chimichanga, and then you get a dessert and you've had Coke with it. You know that nasty, bloated, sluggish feeling of like, oh, I shouldn't have ate that. You, you, raise your hand. How many of y'all have ever been there where you've gone and eaten something and you're like, why did I eat that? I feel so sick. I feel so gross, right? Right. That moment, type it up. Type up how you feel. And then the next time you have some water with lemon, and a piece of salmon and some broccoli or salad or a wrap or some avocado and spinach with some olive oil and uh, balsamic vinaigrette, maybe with some turkey or tuna on it. Next time you juice, the next time you get done, when you leave the gym, you know that feeling after a good exercise, write down how you feel. And literally every morning, read those two lists out loud. I feel, I feel sluggish when I eat this crap. I feel nasty. I feel disgusting. I hate myself. I have no confidence. I feel like a failure. I feel embarrassed. I feel like I'm a horrible person. I feel like I don't deserve a bed. You know, whatever, however you feel when you eat the junk, right? Then when you eat good, you read your list in the morning. Like, man, when I juice, when I go to the gym, I feel, I feel empowered. I feel successful. I feel energy. I feel good. I sleep better. There's no headaches. There's 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 no loss of energy. Like Mike, I can honestly feel a major difference in my days when I drink tea and when I don't drink tea. So what I do is constantly remind myself by looking at my list and I did this. I literally have a list right here on my computer of how I feel when I'm healthy and how I feel when I'm not healthy. How I feel when I'm exercising and how I feel when I don't exercise. Reading those lists regularly get into my subconscious mind 
and they continuously remind my subconscious mind and my energy and my heart and my soul that, you know, when I don't do it, this is how I'm going to feel. And when I do it, this is how I feel. Just That's something good. for you to try. I like that. Hey, I want to field a couple of uh, comments that uh, that came up one uh, little while ago that Rennie said, and I think this is uh, this is good. We were talking about red meat, and she mentions that um, you know 100% organic grass-fed beef is is much better for you. Of course, that's true, and that's because that's like a more natural uh, red meat. Even then, it should be in moderation because even the healthiest red meat uh, is still inflammatory and and inflammation in our body. And uh, mucus within our bloodstream, within our body, is one of the one of the biggest enemies of our health. So uh, even you know, so if you're going to eat red meat, eat the best red meat you can, organic, grass fed. I agree with that. Plus, it tastes better. It really does. It really does. It really, um, truly does. People think organic is nasty. It's honestly, it all tastes better. Yeah, and and you know, a hundred years ago, all beef was organic grass-fed beef. It's only recently, and uh, our friend Rachel, I can't remember, she gave me a statistic when we were driving back from Detroit, she was looking something up. Something like 70 to 80% of all of the antibiotics used in the United States are given to livestock. Wow. It's, so those things are, and, and we hear doctors say, oh, you gotta be careful about giving you antibiotics because we're gonna build up resistance to disease and all that sort of thing. Well, you know, most of the antibiotics is going into cows and chickens and, and uh, and I, I personally am not a big fan of chicken because I've raised chickens, but uh, you know, yeah. I won't, I won't go How there. How nasty they can be, huh? Ugh. And and I'm a, I'm a big fan of wild game. You know, I'll eat venison and pheasant and duck because they're much cleaner, much more uh, natural, and it's a cleaner, purer source of protein. So for me, I will, uh, I will take wild game every time. And I've had actually, I've, I'm a little tangent, but I've had people say to me, I can't believe you eat those like pheasants. They're so nasty. They live out in the in the fields and stuff. And I'm like, okay, I've cleaned pheasants and I've cleaned chickens. I will eat a pheasant 100 times more often than I will eat a chicken because a chicken is nasty. They're okay. sick. They, now you're making me gag. Like, <sighs> no wonder I do. You know where I get most of my protein? Uh, from protein shakes that I make. And I make some good ones. Uh, and also, you know, there's other meat is one of the myths that people have in healthy living and maybe the low carb diet is they think meat is the only place to get protein. And it's just simply not, not even close. Uh, and I agree with what Karen said, organic free range eggs taste so much better as well. Almond if you can is get everything healthy is yeah. better. Kale chips are better than potato chips. Yeah. Farm fresh eggs are like, like you go in the store and you buy the eggs that come from mass farms and then you go to like a farm and you get eggs and it's not even the same thing. It's like you want to go back to the store and slap them and say, those aren't eggs. Those are eggs. You know what I'm saying? I mean, seriously. Look at the store and just start launching the eggs. <laughs> it's time we go <laughs> That's funny. Uh, Jeff asked what my favorite protein shake is. Jeff, uh, my favorite, and I'm, I'm, I'm cautious. I usually use water, but sometimes I'll use almond milk because it tastes better, obviously. But I like almond milk, and I like my chocolate protein powder that I buy from the health food store. And then a uh, scoop or two of peanut butter. Sometimes I'll add in almonds or banana. But peanut butter, chocolate, and almond milk is just pure heaven on earth, and it's so good. And that's my favorite protein shake. Good. And hey, uh, one other. Hey, go ahead, Mike. Sorry about that. Uh, Candace had mentioned before because I mentioned throwing a handful of spinach. No. Sorry, I, my audio, my audio cut out on me. Uh, I had mentioned throwing a handful of spinach and some berries in in the NutriBullet and juicing it up. And Candace had mentioned that she doesn't like spinach. And uh, you know what? The the reality is, I mean, you can put half the NutriBullet full of spinach, put a bunch of watermelon in there, and some strawberries, and Top it off with water. You don't even taste the spinach. You don't taste it. You don't taste the spinach. You're a billion percent right, Mike. You don't even taste it. Yeah, and Rennie uh, agrees with me. So, hey, um, there was one more. What was Caleb, it? I have this eye pillow, right? When I got him to drink some greens, I said, Caleb, what I'm going to do is this. I'm, I made a juice. I want you to trust me, okay? If it's nasty, you don't have to drink it. But I'm going to blindfold you. 
and I'm going to have you take your first drink. And if it's good, I want you to drink it without looking at it. Okay? See, this is the power of the mind. It, usually when he would look at it, he'd be like, that's sick. You know, that's nasty. I'd be like, you know what? That's the first thing our mind tells us. We think because of, have you thought of some of the food we eat? Have you ever looked at it, my friend? Do you want to talk about making you want to puke? Some of the food we eat looks downright nasty, disgusting, yeah. slop. But anyways, that's a whole nother subject. But you know what? When he took his first drink blindfolded, he's like, that's good. I said, okay, keep drinking it. Stay blindfolded. He slammed the whole drink. You ready for this? I took it off and I said, you know what you just drank? You drank about that much spinach in that drink. Because yeah. I could never get him to drink spinach. But now, my friends, if you have to, blindfold yourself. That's why I tell people, all this business of all the whining, pre-juicing, when you make it and you stand there for 25 minutes and have a conversation with yourself, and you're like, you're pacing the kitchen, I don't know, I don't know, you know, should I do this? Am I going to puke? It's going to be nasty. I don't know if I can juice and all this, like, wussy, whining. Look, grab the juice and just drink it. Hear me? Just guzzle it. Slam it. Chug it. Don't think about it. In fact, the more you chug it, don't think about it. Don't let your mind think, oh, this is nasty. Like, I'm getting ready hey, to make, yeah? I was just going to say, you know, if I'm a doctor and I wrote you a prescription that said once a day you need to juice this spinach and it's going to solve your health problems, if I was a doctor and wrote you a prescription, would you do it? Because if I was a doctor and wrote you a prescription of this nasty drug that you had to take to give you wicked side effects, you would go, oh, okay, and then you just go take the drug. Dude, that's powerful. That's actually a powerful concept. Mike, what you just said I really like because these are the mind games we should be playing with ourselves. We should be saying like, okay, like for example, the other day I was reading a book about uh, 50 ways to beat cancer. And my son literally looked at me when we were sitting in the tea shop. He goes, Dad, are you okay? I was like, yeah, why? He goes, you're reading a book about how to beat cancer. And he goes, y you're fine, right? And I said, yeah. I said, Caleb, remember, I'm preventative. Like, if right. this stuff beats cancer when you have cancer, imagine doing these things. See, I believe this. Get ahead of the game. Attack your health head on. And I'm not going to wait until I have some shocking report from a doctor before I get healthy. So I'm learning all of it now and just yeah. doing it now so I don't ever have to hear it from the doctor. You get it? So he was like, wow, that's good. And I said, that's what we should all do. We should all be preventative uh, instead of, what's the other word? A reactive or? Reactive, you know, what they say, like, I'm, I'm all out going for preventive yeah. rather than, Ounce, rather than cure. Counts of prevention, yeah. Um, better, yeah, better two, pound of cure. Couple other quick, like, tips. Karen said uh, she... Uh, I've never juiced Brussels sprouts, so I can't speak to that. It must. It, she said it was pretty nasty, so probably it is. Um, the other thing is, you know, sometimes people look at the green, like when you juice spinach, and just like the color sets them off, and you mentioned that. Put dark berries in there, and it'll turn the whole thing purple, and you won't even see the green. So yeah. and that may help you as well. Plus, it helps the flavor. And if you really just can't stand the spinach, try another green. Go with a Swiss chard. Um, try kale, although kale is usually a little stronger in flavor than spinach. To be honest with you, I, I drank some kale yesterday, and I like spinach better, even though kale is a little healthier. But I love to put some coconut oil on some kale and some different spices and put it in the oven for 10 minutes. I could eat those all day. Yeah. So, you know, some of it's just experimentation, seeing what you like best and, and what uh, what tastes better to you. Um, but but again, I mean, if, if you look at it in terms of this is a medicine for my body, you know, and maybe you don't even like maybe I mean, maybe you don't like to drink water. But again, if I was a doctor and I wrote your prescription said this is going to cure all your problems, would you start drinking water? Yeah. And, and, I, and that, I, you know what I believe in based on what you just said, Mike? I believe. I actually have written out prescriptions for myself. I believe everybody should write out their own prescription because you're going to get one anyways. Either way, you're going to do it before you're sick or you're going to do it after you're sick. So might as well do it before you're sick. We, Mike, do people not really realize that we only live once and how fast it goes? How can you, how can you want to live on this earth and not live at your best and have the highest amount of energy and health. Who I listen, Mike, I got my days calculated. I don't want to spend one day in bed sick. Not one. 
between now and 90, I don't want to waste one of my days on this earth in bed sick. I don't. Uh, Al thinks you should start a healthy cooking show. I'm trying to visualize that. Um. <laughs> Mike, Mike and I are actually, we got some things up our sleeves, folks. If you only knew what was up the sleeves and what's coming around the corner. Uh, but good suggestion, Al. Al, is that you on Instagram that's written on some of my stuff? Because if it is, good to see you on Instagram. Hey, Candace is saying uh, she's not sick, but after 12-hour shifts, she's tired and needs energy. You know what? Juicing is a great solution to that uh, grass, healthy lifestyle juicing. overall. Yeah. Wheat grass is huge. Oolong tea is huge. Green tea. Okay, you ready for this? Rest, exercise, wheat grass, oolong tea, green tea, juicing, water. Those seven things, massive increase in energy. And if none of that works, my friends, Turn up the volume on Fuel for Success. Because one thing about good old Matt and Mike is we're going to bring the energy to you, my friends. Uh, Michelle says we lost her at wheatgrass. Michelle, I say to you, suck it up and drink it. Close your eyes. <laughs> plug your nose if you have to. It's only two ounces. And drink it. And you know what? Sometimes <clears throat> what I do with Caleb is I give him a little orange wedge, maybe a strawberry, maybe a little apple juice. And as soon as you drink the wheatgrass... Chase it down with something else. The pain of the nastiness will be over in less than four seconds. So yeah. now that I it's lost still, you, I paid you back. I want you to go do wheatgrass today, and I want it on my Facebook today. Today. You can just do. You can even do one ounce, and and it is nowhere near as nasty as the medicine that my mom made me drink when I was a kid and I had a cold. I promise you, nowhere near as nasty as that stuff. Except the grape stuff. The grape stuff rock, man. Like the Robitussin? Like you ever drink that? And you're like, Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> Candace says she's never tried wheatgrass. Let's all do a shot of wheatgrass today, all right? It's wheatgrass day. I'm officially I'm officially designating July 20th, July 28th as National Wheatgrass Day. We've got a holiday for everything else in this country. We might as well have a holiday for wheatgrass. Let's start it, Mike. Let's start it. This is National Wheatgrass Day. July 28th, Today, I want it on the calendar. July, Every 28th, July 28th, thus it is dubbed National Wheatgrass Day. So be it. We need to have a ceremony. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll think of something. Yep. Um, what can you mix with it, Candace? Don't mix anything with it, because whatever you mix it with, you'll ruin. The other day I was in the juice store, and I was getting a carrot, apple, ginger, and wheatgrass. And they said, do you, want, do you want the wheatgrass and the carrot apple ginger? I'm like, no way. That ruins like a whole glass of juice. <laughs> Just give it to me straight. Bring it. I ain't mixing it with nothing. Right? Bring it on. Slammed it. Bit into an orange. All set. Give me my carrot apple ginger. Now it's time to enjoy. Man, there's, I don't know of anything too, too more, too, that's, that's more refreshing than ginger. There's like just it. something about ginger. Yes. Well, uh, so I'll, thank you. I'll work on a ceremony. We'll this, figure something guys. out. If this was a blessing to you and you enjoyed it, then we're asking you to share the wealth. Pass it, pay it forward. Give it to your friends, your family, anybody that you know that's sick or that's overweight. Send them this link. It might make them mad or hurt at first, but believe me, it'll save their life. Uh, put it on your Facebook. You know, text friends. Say, hey, just click this link. You got to watch these guys talk about health and weight loss. Some good stuff in here that'll help you guys. Thank you so much for watching live. Those are watching on the archive. And we'll see you tomorrow morning for episode big 150. And uh, I'd like to have a big crowd here tomorrow morning. So tell your friends and family and coworkers and everybody to join with us on episode 150 tomorrow. And uh, if not, you're always welcome to watch later at fuelforsuccess.tv. By the way, for those that are just joining and you're kind of new into juicing, if you go to fuelforsuccess.tv, Mike and I did an entire episode about juicing, the different types of recipes, the different types of juicers to use. So please don't put on my Facebook today, what kind of juicer should I buy? I will answer you, but I'm asking you not to put it on there. 
because the kind of Nutribullet, excuse me, the kind of juicer you should buy is a Nutribullet, a Jack Lane, and there's some others that we listed on that show there. Am I right, Mike? Episode 19, it's right at the top. <clears throat> yes. God bless. Go get healthy. Go get your wheatgrass, my friends. Go get your wheatgrass. We'll see you tomorrow.